right. We're going to solve this equation a bunch of different ways. In the very first way, just with normal elimination, which I think is the best way. Um, the very first thing you do is you make sure you wrote down the question right. I have just had to restart this video twice because I wrote it wrong. So make sure <laughs> you have all the right stuff. And you're going to choose a target. Uh, you can eliminate the x's, y's, or z's first. In this case, I'm thinking those z's are looking kind of nice, because I could just subtract equation 1 from equation 2 and they would go away. Um, but I'm going to choose in this case to do the x's first, because then we'll have a better comparison to um, doing it in a matrix, which we'll do next. Uh, and so, bye bye the x's are going to go. So we're going to multiply negative 2 times row 1, and I'm going to add it to row 2 so that they go away. So I have negative 2x minus 2y minus 2z equals 8, and then this guy stays put, and then those go away like we planned, and I have negative 5y minus z equals 7. All right, matching. All right, we do it again. So if I got rid of the x's here, I'm going to have to get rid of the x's again. Don't be like, ooh, the z's go away now. Don't do it. I did it when I was in high school. Yeah, I don't do it anymore. <laughs> so you got to get rid of the x's again. So I'm going to do negative 4 times row 1, add it to row 3. And so then I'll have the negative 4x minus 4y minus 4z equals 16. Keep row 3 the same, and I'm getting those go away, minus 2y minus 7z equals 49. And so, minus 2y minus 7z equals 49. Cool. And so now I have these two equations with two unknowns, which we're much happier with, right? Like, I can do that. If I just saw this equation, I'll call it equation 4. In this equation, I'll call it equation 5. If you just saw those two without anything else, you'd be like, yeah, that's a, that's a baby problem. I can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, I'll get rid of these z's here. So I'll multiply equation 4. I'll multiply that by a negative 7. And then I'll be able to add it to 5, and bye bye the z's will go. So negative 7 times this one is 35y plus 7z equals minus 49. And then this one's just to stay in put, minus 2y minus 7z equals 49. And so I get 33y equals 0. So y is 0. Hey, I got one. Excellent. And so now uh, that I've got uh, one of my variables, I just can back substitute it, put it in either 4 or 5, because that one had only two unknowns, and so if we know one of them, we'll automatically get the other. So either one, take your pick, I'm going to plug it into 4, so if I have negative 5 times now I know the y is 0, minus z is 7, then it looks like z is minus 7. Check. And now that you have two unknown, two of the unknowns you solved for, put it all the way back up into one of the original ones with three unknowns, any one you want, I'll take number one, and you'll solve for the last one. So x is just x, y is 0, z is negative 7, that should be negative 4, so x should be 3. So x equals 3, y equals 0, and z equals negative 7 are the variables, or the numbers, that will make this equation, all three of those equations, true. So check them, right? Plug in 3 for the x, uh, 0 for the y, and negative 7 for the z into every single one of those equations, and they should work. Pretty fantastic. All right, we're going to do it again another way next.